There's all these bull <laughs> concepts to me that you can't take a girl to dinner because you're a provider. Bull <laughs> take tons of girls to dinner. You can't buy a girl a drink. I buy a girl a drink every single time I isolate in a, night, in a nightclub. I see on the forums like, oh, this girl wanted me to call an Uber to come over and she was totally DTF and I didn't want to be a provider, so I didn't call her the Uber and I lost the lay. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. But I, I'm big on retention. There's plenty of days where I, I will see three or four fuck buddies and not go on new dates. Like, plenty of days. Like, I, I usually run six to 12 girl rotations. I like to have hot, cool chicks on rotation. And that's like a big part of it for me. And I treat them all really well. Like, the, the big thing with rotation, like, you treat them like a princess, but you're not a pussy about it. So if they fuck with you, or they talk to other guys in front of you in public, or they disrespect you in any way, you give them a very stern warning and then you cut them off and replace them. But other than that, you treat them really well. Like, I'm not like a fucking cold asshole to these girls. Like, I'm actually like, I get really close. I get like very attached to like my main chick. My main chick is usually like a 9.5 that's like full package. And, and she's like a girlfriend without a label. And I'll like treat her really well and I'll take her on dates and, there's all these bullshit concepts to me that you can't take a girl to dinner because you're a provider. Bullshit. I take tons of girls to dinner. You can't buy a girl a drink. I buy a girl a drink every single time I isolate in a, night, in a nightclub. If you're that broke that you can't buy a girl a drink, I see on the forums like, oh, this girl wanted me to call an Uber to come over and she was totally DTF and I didn't want to be a provider so I didn't call her the Uber and I lost the lay. <laughs> Are you that fucking retarded? Like you're going to do that over $10 or $5, whatever? And in, in Europe, like it's like a couple dollars. On a typical night out, minimum you should be getting five numbers. You should be getting a phone number as a rule from every girl you open unless she gives you like a really hard fuck off. Um, other than that, you need to know when to cut bait because most guys are just running their wheels, spinning their wheels and set, um, having endless conversations in the nowhere when the girl's either not into them or has terrible logistics to pull home. So what you need to be doing, I always tell my bootcamp students, you need to be making a real time probabilistic assessment of is this girl going to close with reasonable amount of time? Is her logistics decent enough to beat? If a no, you get a phone number and you set a date. That's it. Like, so you need to be getting, you need to be working volume. That's the 10 to 15. You should put a daily calendar reminder. You all should do it right now, actually. Use Tinder for whatever time you're usually free. If that's lunchtime, if that's 5 p.m. when you're off work, whenever, put a daily reminder to use Tinder and Bubble. Because the CEO of Tinder said the algorithm works. Like, the more you use it, the more exposure you get. It's basically like opening. Like, if you didn't go out for a week, you're not going to meet any girls. If, if you're not using Tinder every day, you're going to meet less girls. So use it every day. And like I said before, two closes a week is going to give you 104 closes per year, which everyone, I think, would be thrilled with, given that only four guys in here are over 200. So you're saying, like, you meet her, you get her number, and then she forgets who you are? Um, there's a bunch of approaches. You can, you can send a picture of yourself. Um, that's a, a high quality picture, like something you would use your Tinder main picture. Um, I do that a lot with night game closes because they're meeting so many guys, the next day you're just a random number on your phone. It, you should ideally be framing the date in person. That's like very, very, very key because you have a lot of legwork to do over text when the buying temperature and vibe and compliance have dropped off and there's no investment yet. So if you're going over text like, hey, it's so-and-so from the nightclub, you have to hope she replies. Then you have to do your little banter sequence, hope she keeps replying. Then you have to ask her for the meetup, hope she, asks, she, hopes she wants to do it. And all the buying temperature is gone, she probably forgot what you talked about, she probably doesn't even know who the fuck you are, and you're probably done at that point. Whereas, if you say, do you like such and such date activity? Do you like margaritas? Do you like craft beer? Do you like wine? Yes. Okay, cool, when are you free? Okay, let's meet up Monday at seven, sound good? Hey, it's so-and-so, see you Monday at seven becomes much stronger. And you can also take a picture with them. I did this for a while, I don't really do it anymore because I'm just lazy. But you can take a picture with them, like, hey, you look like one of my close friends back home. Picture, send it to them the next day. Make it a draft text, send it in the morning. But yeah, night game numbers are notoriously flaky. You're gonna get about half the numbers flaking, even if your game is solid. And most coaches won't admit that, but it's true. Who here has professional pictures for their online game? That's pathetic. Really, like I was just in Portugal and on Airbnb, it was like 50 euros to join a group and get pro photos done. And I got like really good photos. And then anyone here not afford 50 euros? Like if you can't, there's bigger problems, but get the professional photos. Alex, how, how important are professional photos? It's like the whole thing almost. If your SMV is a five or a six or a seven, pro photos are gonna bump you to like a nine and that's gonna make you stand out from the rest of the guys. And then if you get edits with Photoshop, that's gonna really boost you even further. So like, all my Tinder pictures right now, girls, multiple girls have rated them all above a nine. 
And I don't think anybody should be posting any, I'm not a nine, I don't think, like, without Photoshop and Pro Camera, but I don't think anyone should be posting anything below that, because there's no reason to. No matter how ugly you are, unless you're super ugly, like, Pro Camera and good lighting in Photoshop can put you up to a nine. Anyone here. I don't really even really see anybody that ugly. Uh, then, uh, <laughs> Also, what does what happen if the pictures look too professional, like uh, somehow fake, you know? I'll let Alex feel this. What if, the, what if the pictures look too professional? In Berlin, uh, yeah, I mean, when it's too professional, it just means they look posed, right? So yeah, as long as, they're not, as long as they're not posed or try hard. What he, his comments argue with about you don't want to look like you're trying to be cool. Or if the camera is the quality is like super hardcore good. And it's, it's fine. All my pictures right now are like super hardcore quality. Like. And the, and the girls will be like, "These are you a real person?" I'll be like, "Oh, I have a photographer roommate that's like pro, a pro photographer." There's a site called I don't like to put this out publicly because I don't want guys to overrun it. But there's a site called and it's a lot of very fine things I'm doing that I will never put out. But there's a site called Seeking Arrangement where it's a whole bunch of like really hot chicks that are like fully broke, and I can trust myself by being like a young, cool fun guy and most of the guys are old fat married have kids awkward etc so it's a very good lead source to attract hot girls and then what I have like a whole specific sequence and algorithm that I do to get them invested so that they're not caring about money anymore and the ones that are caring about money I just block I just screen out okay oh wait what is this here oh okay yes I trained this one guy. Uh, how much time do I have? I'm just trying to figure out. Four minutes. Okay. Um, I trained this one guy that was like a top salesman in his company. You mentioned that you multiple Speak louder. Dates. You mentioned that you booked multiple dates. Yeah. Same day. Yeah. So how do you answer it without getting pissed? It's always a work. I, I always blame work. So. If I'm fucking a girl like four or five rounds and I'm supposed to see another girl, hey, work meeting going a little bit longer. I'm not sure and I'll be done. I'll text you soon, so I'm good. Or uh, girls being really prude. Next girl, I can meet me a little sooner. Hey, uh, just finished my work. It's always work because they can't blame you for that. So my go-to is always, I had a work meeting, even when I like full blow them off. Like sometimes they arrive at my place and I'm banging a chick and I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna fucking even be able to postpone this. I don't even want to, I'm, I'm having fun with this chick. Oh, sorry, like, we just closed a big deal at work. Oh, you're an asshole. Like, I came here 40 minutes, waited, blah, blah, blah. Hey, what, did you want me to just blow off the deal I've been working on for six months? Oh, no, I'm sorry. So, I'm like a huge asshole. Like, I just do, like, whatever's optimized. I don't give a fuck about them. I, I care about them when I'm dating them, but, like, I do the, the most <laughs> optimal move every time. Machiavellian. As they call me, I'm the dark triad. <laughs> Narcissistic. Machiavellian, what's the third one? Oh no, sociopath. Okay, so I, I taught a guy that was the number one salesman in this company and he said, this is Jordan Belfort's straight line persuasion system when I went through it. How many of you have seen The Wolf of Wall Street? That's my favorite movie. Um, I've never studied Jordan Belfort's stuff, but it makes sense that the optimal game method replicates the optimal sales method because there's lots of parallels to sales. And basically what the straight line persuasion system is, you're moving things along specific points of compliance, and sometimes they will diverge, give objections or non-compliance, and you bring them back to the straight line and move them forward again. So the big compliance points, as I state here, are opening, isolating, escalating, which is being physical, going for the makeout, pulling, and then some micro points, like when you're leaving the club, they're making a big commitment to go home with a stranger instead of staying with their friends, getting into a taxi, um, going into your apartment, and I've, I've actually found it's about 8 to 12 minutes you have when you're doing the poll before they start like bringing up all the objections again. And I say into the bedroom because they're committing to having sex with you, which shouldn't be a problem if you've done things correctly beforehand. But at each of these points, and this is what I train in my boot camps, so I wish Niall was here, I taught him like, when she gives you resistance on the open, you do this. When she gives you resistance in the isolation, you do this. When she gives you resistance on the makeout, you do this. When she gives you resistance on the pull. There's 14, I think I have another slide about it. There's 14 main objections I've identified when you try to pull, and I've figured out the exact way to deal with them. And I train my guys on boot camps the same way he trains his sales team in Wolf of Wall Street. 
He's like, they're going to say I need to think about it, I need to check with my wife, I, blah, blah, blah. And there's specific things you do. Basically, it's like, I can't leave my friends. I have to be up early, which happens on weekdays because I have work. I just met you. I just got here. I need to stay till the end. Have you guys heard this shit? I'm a lesbian. Uh, a boyfriend. I have a boyfriend. I don't touch that one anymore. I've, had, I've, had, I've actually had like three very serious death threat close calls. Fucking guys' wives. So I just stay away from that now. You just want to fuck me. What if you're a murderer? What if you're a rapist? Like, there's, there's, it's the same shit every time. And I teach guys, I have them memorize. When they say this, you say this. And you're going to get objections every time. And, and that sales guy, he said, like, almost every sale he makes, he's getting objections. And that, that means they're interested. They're just not comfortable enough yet. They don't feel safe enough yet. They want to be put at ease mentally. And so you put them at ease. And if you have a female wing, you almost never get objections. I've had a bunch of bisexual girlfriends, or fuck buddies, and I just, the, the reporter chick, actually, we just pulled a foursome, for those of you who follow my Instagram, you saw it. We pulled a 19 and 20 year old, two set, with me and my fuck buddy, on a boot camp. The boot camp student fucked one of them, I fucked all three of them. And uh, there was like no objections, because they feel safe, because another attractive girl has approved of you already. So it kind of like shortcuts the whole thing. All objections are stemming from the place of, I want to feel safe with you, I want to feel comfortable with you, I don't want to end up in a one-on-one -on -one awkward situation, and I want to make sure like I will have a way home or a way out or whatever. And, and the reason, a lot of that stems from most guys are fucking losers, most guys are beta males, that's where cop blocking comes in. When I approach a girl and I say, hey, I want to meet you, and the girl comes in and says, we're lesbians, all that's communicating is most guys that talk to my hot friend are fucking losers. I'm going to assume you're a loser too. Show me you're not. And all you really need to do is just be like, hey, I just want to meet you real quick. What's your name? Be normal, not fancy. Like just like Alex said, fancy shit is garbage and it will get you nowhere. You don't want to be fancy in the open. You look like a Sarah. You look like you're from Mississippi. All that shit's bullshit. I, for five years, my open air has been, hi, can I meet you real quick? It's direct, but it also is like low compliance real quick. Hey, I want to meet you real quick, what's your name? And then after that, I say, hey, I just moved here. I'm going to be a DJ, best club X and Y. And why do I do that? Because mystery says, when you cement your identity, it imports a whole bunch of shit about you. Okay, this guy has access to women. He's high value, he has adventurous life. His life is cooler than mine. Um, he's normal, he's cool, blah, blah, blah. So I say it every fucking time. That's my next thing after my open, every fucking time. I even do that on online game. Why? When they come from a bragging frame, they're garbage. Demonstrations of higher value to this day still work as long as they come from the right place. If I said, hey, what's up? I'm an accountant, emotionally flat, possibly even negative value because you sound like a fucking loser. So why would I say that? I'm not an accountant, but that's an example. So you wanna be, you wanna be fucking cool. You wanna be a rock star. I have a Photoshop picture I have, a, I have a green screened picture of me in front of a, basically I'm standing with headphones. I was a club DJ before pickup, so it's not like a full light, but even if you're not, you can still say it. I'm standing in front of a green screen like this, and it's like the Tomorrowland backdrop, and they did all the lighting perfectly. So if, and a lot of chicks are into electronic music, so any chick that bites on that, it's like game over. Like, oh, you're a DJ? That's fucking awesome. Oh yeah, have you heard of Tomorrowland? It's the biggest, for those of you who don't know, it's the biggest electronic music festival in the whole world. And it's in Belgium. And I, I'm like, yeah, I did it in Tomorrowland a couple years ago. And they're like, holy shit. Like, I just, I just picked up a 9.5 stripper in Warsaw. And she's, she was 21. She's like, oh, you're a DJ? That's really cool. Hey, have you heard of Tomorrowland? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did it there two years ago. No fucking way. She's tapping all the other hot strippers. He did it Tomorrowland. Oh, yeah, check it out. Oh, my God, look at him. He's DJing Tomorrowland. What am I doing? I'm leveraging status. I have a friend that, that knows Jonah Hill really well, when he was fat, really fat, now he has like pink hair or some shit, hold on one sec, and tens going in and out of his trailer all day. Is it because he's in such great shape? No, it's because he's Jonah Hill. So when I convey that I'm a fucking celebrity DJ, it makes the game a lot easier. I'm playing all the odds in my favor. My game is still very tight, my subcommunications are tight, my verbals are tight, my boundaries, are, everything is very tight. But why am I not going to use that as an advantage? And especially with stripper game, a hired gun game, you need to cement yourself as industry to give yourself an advantage and to also to break yourself out of the customer frame. I'm not going to go into that. 
But the biggest keys to hired gun game and stripper game are to break yourself out of being like the rest of all the fucking assholes that are complimenting them and giving them tons of attention. What was? Yeah, you said you get like high stats, but at the end of the day, it's like fake stats, isn't it? No, it doesn't fucking matter. She's not like, oh, prove to me, like, show me live clips that you were at Tomorrowland. All it's doing, and I am a cool dude, all it's doing is giving her like a big set of attraction about you. It's not, I'm not, well, I'm not advocating to just be this pretend character that girls like. You should actually be cool. And like, that's, a, that's another whole topic where all these guys are just trying to use outer game tricks when they're actually a fucking loser. And it's not going to work because she's going to spot it. I told you I studied a lot of neuroscience, cognitive science. Girls have 10 times more gray matter than us, which is responsible for interneuronal connections, which is responsible for emotional and verbal tasks. Because when we were in tribes, they were fucking hang like basically just getting their tits sucked, but also like gossiping and hanging out with the other chicks. And men have four times as much white matter which is responsible for local processing, which is why we crush them in logic and math and chess and poker, government, like anything that's like logical tasks, it's not social inequality. We have different propensities. You can take a 16-year-old girl and she's going to have greater social intuition than me, even though I've been through tens of thousands of interactions. It's because of how our brain is wired. Like, how does it make you feel when you, like, I don't know, doesn't it feel kind of fake then, or...? No. I, well, to me, I'm always trying to get an advantage. I always, I always want to give myself the best. Look at Dan Bilzerian. He has a huge advantage. Partially, partially because he's rich, but he's leveraging it. That's not, it's not like that's the core focus. They ultimately fall in love with you. They ultimately fall in love with what you bring to the table. It's giving you a big edge to get in the door. With that stripper, if I just acted like a regular guy, she's gonna run her stripper scripts on me, which is, I'll go over that. Oh, hi, you, you're really cute. Fake IOIs, fake interest. Oh, thank you. And she's just trying to like game you to get a dance. Instead, I'm like, boom, hey, what's up? I'm gonna be DJing at this club and this club. Oh, really? Yeah, I DJed at Tomorrowland. Boom, now all of a sudden I, se I separate myself from the whole pack. Now I have an in. And it's not like I'm faking the whole time. I just gave myself an in so I can bang a girl that's close to a 10. And then she falls in love with me. The, the whole thing is not an act. You're giving yourself a good advantage to get your foot in the door. And then from there you take it forward and she, she, she ultimately is attracted to you. That's what I'm doing on the sugar daddy sites. These girls aren't, hang out with me continuously because they think I'm rich. I'm not ever paying them anything. They're, they're hanging out with me. Holy shit. It's plugged in. Oh, it's not plugged in the computer though. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the sugar daddy girls aren't continuously hanging out with me because I'm rich. I'm fucking like nines and tens off that site that are turning down offers of lots of money from guys that are old, low value, fat, married, awkward, etc. I'm contrasting on the other end of the spectrum and they hang out with me and I have key things I say that delays the whole like pay me thing and then they fall in love with me. Oh here, let me go over, how many of you guys believe in state? Because RST teaches it. Be honest. State, like um, you arrive to the club and you need to warm up and like build up a thing to be able to game properly. How many of you believe that? Okay, like a quarter of you. Here's why state is bullshit. I have a whole video about it on my channel. But RSD teaches that you need to walk in the club and you need to like talk to ugly girls. I never teach that ever. I never talk to ugly girls. Not, that's not um, misogynistic. I just don't want to fuck ugly girls, so I'm not going to talk to them. Secondly, um, you should never need to warm up. Uh, this will be probably the most important part of my talk right now. I want you guys to think of your value potential as if it was a zero to a hundred scale, set it at a hundred now and never let it move from there for the rest of your life. Like, I want, I want to repeat that. If your value potential was from zero to a hundred, put it at a hundred and never move it and make a brick wall and anything external, rejections, people making fun of you, people not accepting you, Whatever it is, nothing can touch that brick wall. You're always at 100. I pull mostly my first or second set of the night. It's, that's true. Why? Because you need to start, I think I have it here. You need to start viewing every set as a vacuum. 
which means it doesn't matter if it's the first set of the night, it doesn't matter if it's the 30th set of the night, it doesn't matter if it's 9 p.m. or if it's 3 a.m. or if you're just fucking going for lunch. You need to be on at all times. Because why? Because you're not faking a pickup persona. You're not faking a pickup alias. Lots of guys are like, okay, I need to be a pickup, time to go into pickup mode. Okay, I got off work, okay, pickup time. Hey, like, and start saying all this cheesy shit. It's all wrong. You need to be an alpha guy for real, and you need to be at 100 out of 100 at all times. And when you do that, girls will respond to it. When you believe that you are at 100 out of 100, girls will respond to it. Here's the flaw with state. RSD teaches you need to like build up to 100, okay? So like, okay, I'm at 40%, I'm at 50%, right? I walk in the club, okay, I'm at 40%, I need to talk to a bunch of fat chicks or have like a bunch of like throwaway interactions. You could have pulled those girls, not the fat ones, but the, the hot ones. You could have pulled them if you thought you were cool enough. What you were doing is self-handicapping. So if you walk in on a chick and you're like, this is my first one, it doesn't count, or it's throwaway, you are handicapping yourself. Hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. Uh, oh, and you're unsure of yourself. Why? Because you think your value is at 40%. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run No doubt, son, this is not just about fun We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum